Remember that time we all made big goals and plans for 2020 and then 2020 actually happened? Well, I have to say I actually did cross off some big goals and dreams and plans this year, but I couldn't have done it without these, my trusty power sheets, my go-to tool for goal planning and setting. In this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of exactly how I use power sheets to set goals in both life and in my creative small business. By the end of this video, you will definitely know if power sheets is right for you or not. I feel like a lot of people either love them or try them and don't like them and I definitely recommend at least trying them. Let's go. So it's starting to get to that point in the year where you hear about goal setting and planning a little bit ad nauseum, but I really do love power sheets and I got my 2021 set in the mail the other day and I wanted to talk through them. I was even telling a magazine interviewer I was talking to lately that power sheets are part of what even helped me understand that I wanted to start a small business and leave my corporate job, which I had loved, but it just wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do forever, especially as I moved into the stage of life I was in. I first started working through a set of power sheets as I was coming out of eating disorder recovery. And since then, they have helped me develop my faith goals, my financial goals, uh, books that I want to read, grow a business, grow a family, so much. Watch this video to the end, especially if you're interested in winning a set of power sheets for yourself. If no matter the crazy times going on in the world, you at least want to use your day in and day out routines to make progress and get towards that person you want to be when you're 80 years old, click that like button. I know I sure do. If you haven't subscribed yet, I put out videos and content for small business owners and creatives every single week. Hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it and that's how you'll be in the loop to know when the next one drops. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the camera around so you can see my new set of 2021 power sheets. This is the color I picked. And I wanna compare them to 2020's set and talk through four reasons that I love them. Number one reason I love them because they actually make you write things down. I am pretty much split digital and analog. I love both, I use both all the time, but I think there's some magic to actually sitting down and having to write through the whole process of why do you even wanna have a goal in the first place. Before I do that, Comment down below and tell me, are you allergic to setting goals or do you like to do it? I have definitely been both types. I've learned to love it. Okay, let's turn the camera around. Okay, so here you can see a comparison. These are 2020s, these are 2021s. There's not much change in the cover this year. And I don't know if you can see like close up, that's kind of the wear. I mean, I use this every day, it's beside me. So that's how it holds up uh, 10 months in. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the front so you can get started. And you get the sticker sheet. Uh, and then let's see if you can see these up close. You can kind of see all of this before, um, I'm gonna show you before we break into the January tab and here's the tab for every single month. And then along the way, you're gonna have on the like quarterly check-ins as well. So those look a little bit different, the tabs this year, if you are used to these year after year, uh, but these pages are mostly the same. So I'll flip through them pretty quickly so you can kind of see, uh, these are the category sections and I'll show you in this in just a moment, but uh, I'll say them out loud. Health, friends, uh, spouse, relationship, family, finances, spiritual and personal growth, work and recreation. So I typically do use these eight goal spots and then I will let myself have three for work a quarter. Uh, so that's about how many goals I have in the year and then these goals change up quarterly. But I'll keep flipping so you can see the other pages at the front of the book. Uh, so these definitely take more than like a night to go through. Uh, I recommend I at least split it up over a few days and just kind of let myself lazily go through it and think about it and process a little bit. Keep flipping, boom, and so you get through all that and then you start to get into actually developing out your annual yearly goals. So let me again show you, let's flip to uh, in 2020, so the fall quarter so you can see. Okay, see how I would set, I'll go through those, but I would set my seven goals in the other categories and then, I, or sorry, my six, and then I'll come into um, and do these goals, the three goals that have to do with business and that's how I usually use that front section and then update them once a quarter. I also love that I can't do this whole process and fill out all those pages at the beginning on like New Year's Eve. There's no way. Instead, I usually start early somewhere around American Thanksgiving ending and go through them bit by bit. It definitely takes a few weeks to process for me. If you like doing that with a leader or a group, I did it for the first time in a group last year at Cultivate What Matters Live. I got to be a table leader. It was so fun 
fun with Laura and the whole team, but she's doing an online version of it this year that could also be helpful. So like I said, I've done this uh, where it's just me and I move through them and I like that way. I also liked going through it in more of a group and just hearing things that uh, may inspire and uh, pull different things out of me. I know that's a chunk of time, but spending this big bulk of time filling out all of this beginning and setting up really solid annual goals then helps me with my monthly goals because truly my monthly goals are just uh, little iterations or pull outs of the big goals. So I don't really set a huge block of time each month setting my goals. It takes me probably about 30 minutes to set my monthly goals because I've spent so much time at the front end. Last pro tip here, before I start those few weeks of really digging in and planning 2021, I will say I already have my financial blueprint for my personal life and my business already done. I follow my friend, I love her, Shanna Skidmore. Her blueprint model has helped me so much craft a financial plan for my business. Essentially, it is built off of what I need to bring home for my family. So we start by figuring out our personal needs, what we actually need to cover our bills and where we want to give and um, what we want to save for. And then from that, we work backwards and I figure out what does my business need to make. So instead of just dreaming up all of these big financial goals, they actually have a purpose and I know what numbers I need to hit so I can just rest. So as I'm coming into these, I already know what those numbers are and how much I need to make the next year in my business then I start working on these. Hope that helps business owners that are walking through this process. Reason number two I love them is because I need to be able to set small goals and deadlines and see progress along the way or else I think everything is a failure. Let's keep going so I can show you the monthly and the quarterly pages. Let me go ahead and break down and show you what the actual goal planning part looks like in this front of book section. Uh, so I showed a little bit of this earlier, but you can go ahead and start to map out your action plan and what you're gonna do. Um, and then it gives you space to write them all down. Um, but what I wanna show you, cause something has changed. So this is, this is what it looks like done. Um, there's your example over there, but in the past where there has been a quarterly tab, January, February, March, um, spring is what this says, and then it gives you a chance to refresh your goals. They have gone ahead and baked that into um, the April tab and so on and so forth. So get to the end of Q1, especially if you're a business planner, I think that is interesting because like I said, I like to be able to set three quarterly business goals. So you're gonna have to get creative if that's you and you have more, or you can just set like that many personal goals and then three business goals or however you want to do it. So I did want to note that little change um, from last year, but I do like that every quarter it gives you a chance to just reassess and figure out, was that a good goal in the first place? Did you overdo it a little bit? Or how does it need to be updated with how life has actually happened? And that's why I think um, I was able to get stuff done in 2020 because every quarter, um, especially after we got through the first three months of the year and everything was crazy, I got to uh, redo things and revisit them a little bit. Reason number three, I love them because power sheets can sit in front of me every single day at my desk, which they do. If you're inside my program, The Art of Efficiency, then you've heard me definitely talk about my rest to work wind up routine. And this is when I go through and I look at this sheet that I have next to me, my tending list. I have a really hard time going into work or frankly doing any task if I don't understand why. I am that kid who asks why all the time. If a task isn't connected to a greater purpose or I don't understand the reason behind it, it just seems meaningless to me. And so having these goals in front of me every single day while I'm working helps me connect my day-to-day -day tasks with the actual big picture goal that I'm aiming for. The last piece is showing you uh, like a month to month. So that's called, or they call it in power sheets, attending list. So here's some instructions or just Pointer, pointers, if that helps um, you. But the tending list looks pretty much the same from year to year. Um, and like I've said in the past, I use this page. You'll see, I'm gonna show you, these are used. This is a page from last year. Um, I tend to use this page just as a brain dump. So that's what it actually says. I don't really use it for that. I use it to jot down things during the day so I don't forget them. Uh, so here's a page all scratched up. And then I wanted to show you too, I bookmarked 
this page because there are these monthly pages again. Um, here's some cute accessories that they sent along that um, they have this year. But I use these to just sketch out marketing plans and that's so helpful. So I don't actually use it um, for any reason than other than to draft and it's been very, very helpful this year. By the way, if you are interested in how I set up different workflows and rhythms and routines in my life and business, then look down below and you can grab some info on the art of efficiency and my free class all about how to get freed up to get more done as a creative. Reason number four I love them is for these pages called wildcard pages. So if you've ever looked at any kind of planner or whatever and thought that would be perfect if it just had XYZ. This is where you get to customize your power sheets with little inserts. Let me pull a stack I have of these. Aha. Okay, so all of these different um, sheets come as a wild card pack. Every quarter I have taped in a financial check-in and I make sure that I run through that. I also make sure that I um, jot down different books that I've read during the year. I keep them on Goodreads, but I also want them somewhere in paper. There's so many different other wildcard pages. I also have made my own in the past and found that super helpful. Two quick cons or I guess things that power sheets don't let you do. Number one, they don't help you plot a work back schedule. So they don't essentially function as a task manager. So speaking to my business owner, friends or entrepreneurs, you still need an Asana or a Trello or some sort of project management tool to help you take a big project in your business and break it down and either delegate out tasks to your team or divvy them up on different days or months for yourself. Now, those things do end up going into my power sheets, but you're gonna need to use a tool like that. Second thing, they don't exactly come in neutrals and I, my favorite colors tend to be like white, black, navy, and beige, but they do have this new blue color this year, which is why I got it, so that was pretty fabulous. And there you go. If you are interested in winning a set of 2021 power sheets, then just look down below for details on that entry. And if some of your goals include launching your website or your business, refreshing all your marketing materials, or just hitting your actual business sales goals, then be sure to watch the next video I have teed up for you where I'm giving some of my best copywriting tips away so you can implement them and make more sales. See you there. If you found this helpful, click the like button and subscribe.